message of grace is brought to you by Christian people who believe the Bible to be the Word of God and who appreciate its power and authority. Within the pages of the Bible itself, there is a God-given design for its study. Right dividing the Word of Truth is the key to understanding the Bible. We're glad you've joined us for another interesting look into God's infallible book as Richard Jordan, president of Grace School of the Bible, presents another in a series of messages designed to help you understand and enjoy the Bible. Let's join them now. Steve and I are sitting here today just talking about some things in the Word of God. It's a wonderful thing to be a Bible student. Steve, by the way, is a uh, student in our, our school, Grace School of the Bible. He's in the first year, and he's, this is his debut on, on television, I think. He has to uh, get, a, get his uh, feet wet ministry-wise, and it's good to have you with us today just to have the opportunity to see uh, how the television program is produced. You know, one of the great things in life is to be able to understand God's Word, to have a key that allows you to grasp the, the, uh, the Word of God for yourself. Uh, there are some folks that watch this television program that uh, were sharing with me recently they, they, their journey into grace. Uh, they started out, they, they were raised in the, uh, the, the, the Roman Catholic Church. They spent... Uh, uh, three years or so in, in, in uh, the Jehovah Witness movement. They spent 17 years in the charismatic and Pentecostal charismatic movement and searching and not finding what they were looking for. And one day they just sat at where you're, you're sitting watching uh, the television and they happened to see this goofy guy teaching the Bible. And they said, wow, what? that was strange. The next week they saw it again. And then uh, the man called his wife and said, let's sit down here and look at this. And they, they began to study. And uh, as, as I was in a meeting and they were there, they, they, they were sharing their testimony. They said, you know, what, what's happened is that we've begun to understand how to study the Bible for ourselves. And look at what you've done to us. You've taught us to be able to understand the Bible on our own. And the brother told me, he said, you know, we never were in a group that ever told us we could think, much less to tell us how to think and then to think for ourselves and on our own. And understand the Bible for yourself. The key to understanding the Bible, and by the way, the glorious freedom. Stand fast in the liberty where Christ has made you free. The freedom that you have. Freedom from, from the, the bondage of religious tyranny. Freedom from, from the, the, the control and the dominion of, of sin in your life. The freedom that comes. Jesus says, you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. The freedom that comes from understanding God's Word rightly divided. And you see, that issue of right division, that's the key to understanding the Bible. The only verse in the Bible that tells you to study the Bible says, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the Word of truth. And that issue of right division is the key that opens up God's Word for you so that you can, you're not having to have preachers and teachers and commentaries and all the rest, but so that you can go to God's Word and get the profit out of God's Word that He gave you, that, that He put in it for you, so that you can walk by faith. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the Word of God. The only way to walk by faith is to have an intelligent understanding of what God's Word says, and then to rest your faith and confidence in the objective standard of thus saith the Lord. Everybody says they want to go by the Bible. You don't meet Christian people anyway that don't want to go by the Bible. You don't meet many people at all uh, that, that want to say the Bible shouldn't be obeyed. The problem is, is that, that everybody reads the Bible and every man does that which is right in his own eyes. How can you know what the Bible really te teaches and, and, and what the real truth is? Well, the Apostle Paul is the one that says, study to show thyself approved unto God, rightly dividing the word of truth. And if you go to the Apostle Paul and say, Paul, you teach me how to do it. Uh, he does. We've been studying in, in our last few broadcasts and our studies together in Ephesians chapter number 2. So let me invite you to get your Bible. And let's look again today at Ephesians chapter 2 and let's move on in, in, in the study of how Paul would lay out the word of God and how Paul would rightly divide it. Go with me to your Bible. Get your Bible if you can. And, uh, you know... You, on our radio pro ministry, I have to say often, um, I know you can't get your Bible. But on the television, well, you're, you're in your home or wherever you are, maybe a place of business or an eating establishment or something, and uh, you, can write, you, you can at least listen and write, write verses down. But if you're at home, you could get a Bible, 
And uh, look at these verses with us. Ephesians chapter number 2. It's real important if you have God's Word in front of you and you look at it. It's the written Word of God, and it has a special impact in your life when you look at it. So that's, that's important. But you follow these verses. Ephesians chapter 2, verse number 11. Paul says, Wherefore remember that ye being in time past Gentiles in the flesh who are called uncircumcision, but that which is called the circumcision in the flesh made by hands, that at that time you are without Christ. Why were they without Christ? Being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers uh, from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. Now, that time period, and we've, we've already studied this, but I'm going to put it on the board again because we're going to move on today, is a time period he calls time past. And the basic characteristic of time past back there is this division that God made between some people that he calls the circumcision and some other people that he calls the uncircumcision. And that division, these people here, the circumcision, have covenants. They have promises. God gave them uh, the law. As whom concerning the flesh, Christ came. When the Lord Jesus Christ showed up in the books of, uh, uh, of Matthew, uh, Mark, Luke, and John, the earthly ministry of Jesus Christ, it belonged to these people right up here. These people down here were cut off. They were strangers. They were aliens from that. These people up here, and that, of course, is the nation Israel, had all the blessings. Time, that's time past. Jesus Christ dies uh, at the end of those books back there. He, he's, he's resurrected. He ascends into heaven. He sends the Holy Spirit back on the apostles in the early Acts period. And when, you, when you're over here, you have the 12 that he trained over here. They carry on that ministry over there. And when you're in the early Acts period, that same distinction. We've seen this over and over. The last couple of weeks, we talked about this middle wall of partition that's, that, that's between us here. And that, that wall of partition didn't fall at Calvary. And it didn't fall in Acts 2. In fact, in Acts 1 to 7, that thing is still up. It's not till you come to the stoning of Stephen that that changed. In the fall of Israel, salvation goes to the Gentiles. Verse 13, he says, But now, but now in Christ Jesus, you who sometime were far off are made nigh by the blood of the cross. Now things have changed. Now there's something different going on in here. And there, there, there's a new program and a new agency. Now Israel, the circumcision, have been set aside everybody's been concluded in unbelief. These, the Gentiles are already in unbelief. Now he's concluded them all in unbelief that he might have mercy on all. Then you go over here in, in verse number 7, and it says that in the ages to come. So you have some ages to come out here. In other words, what you've got is, is, is some distinctions. There's time past. There's but now. They're the ages to come. And out over here in the ages to come... God fulfills His purpose with these people. The promise that this man had back here gets fulfilled over there. God's purpose in the church, the body of Christ in here, as He forms it, what He's going to use it for, is, will be fulfilled in the ages to come. So there is a fulfilling age out here, a time when, these, when, when, when what God did in time past and what He's doing in, 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 the, in the but now section in here is fulfilled. Now, the question is, and we've talked about, and we're just reviewing right now, what you have is, is in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, you have the earthly ministry of Christ to the nation Israel, and God deals with men on the basis of the distinction of the circumcision and the uncircumcision. Therefore, I know that it's time past. Brother Steve, that was here just a minute ago, the Bible that he had that we were looking at is a Bible that's called a red-letter edition. And uh, he, he, he's reading it, and... and, and in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, the words of Christ are in red, as though those were the only words that were important. I bet you probably have a red-letter edition Bible somewhere in your, in your cedar chest somewhere, don't you? I do. And it's very easy to have those things. But you know what you do? You find out that the people that put the words in red, listen, every word in the Bible is the Word of God. Not, there are no words in the Bible that are less the Word of God than, than, than others. They're all God's Word, and they're all equally important as God's Word. The, ver the words that are back here in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John that Christ spoke are not more important than the words in Romans through Philemon in Paul's epistles. Paul calls his, his epistles the words of Christ. Written to the church, the body of Christ. 
during the dispensation of the grace of God, when God is dispensing His grace to a lost and dying world. These words are just as much the words of the Lord Jesus Christ as those words. The difference is these words back here are spoken during a time when God had a middle wall of partition between the circumcision and the uncircumcision, and this uncircumcised man couldn't hear the words because they're spoken on the other side of the wall. And he's on the wrong side. When did the wall fall? It didn't fall at Calvary. Romans 11, verse 11, we've seen the verse. I say, that then have they stumbled that they should fall? They stumbled, but they didn't fall. But God forbid through their fall, then they did fall. Early Acts period, Israel is still in, the wall still up, Israel still the issue. For you to go to Acts chapter 2, for example, or back to the cross of Calvary, to start the church, the body of Christ, in which, we, which God has in operation today, is a fallacy. It's a blunder. It's a mistake. And the reason it is, is because in God's Word, now, I didn't say anything about the preacher's, you know, the preacher's notebook. Now, I didn't say anything about the, 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 the commentaries. I said in God's Word. In God's Word, God is still dealing with and through the nation Israel. And the middle wall of partition is still up. And the message isn't to you and to me today. The message is, is God's program through the nation Israel. It's not until you come to that other apostle, the apostle Paul, whom the Lord Jesus Christ from heaven reaches down and saves and makes him Saul, uh, take, makes out of Saul, Paul, and I'll get a little rid of some of my nervous energy there, and uh, saves Saul of Tarsus, makes him Paul the apostle. You see, our, our program is, is revealed to us and centers in the ministry God gave to Paul, not the ministry that he gave to Peter back over here. That's when the wall fell. Through the, Paul says, through the fall of Israel, salvation has gone to the Gentiles. And if the diminishing of them be the riches of the world, see there, they fall, they diminish, and now they're not an issue anymore. In the meantime, he saves Saul of Tarsus, makes him Paul the apostle, and brings in a new program. And that's the question for our study today. If we've moved from time past... And the wall has fallen, and that program is over. Now what? What's going on now? And the answer is in verse number 13 here. But now in Christ Jesus, you who sometime were far off, are made nigh by the blood of Christ. For he is our peace, who has made both one, and has broken down the middle wall of partition between us, having abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments contained in ordinances, for to make of himself of twain, of the two, he takes these two people and now is making one new, new. That's something new. It wasn't there before. He's making a, a new thing. For example, in 1 Timothy chapter number 1, Paul says that in me first, Jesus Christ might show forth all long suffering for a pattern. To them which you have to believe on him to life everlasting. Now, you think about that. If Paul says that in me first, Jesus Christ is going to show forth a pattern to them which you here have to believe, then was Paul first in a line of people who were going to believe just like him? Well, the answer is yes, of course. But if he's first, was there somebody before him? Well, if there's anybody before him, he wouldn't be first, he'd be what? Second, third, fourth, or umpteenth, whatever it would be. If he's first, he's the first one. The first person in that group of people who are going to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ unto everlasting life according to the pattern Paul lays down. There it is in Romans to Philemon. That group of people calls the body of Christ. The first person in that, 1 Timothy 1, verse 15 and 16. Get your Bible, read the passage, is Paul. So when Saul of Tarsus becomes Paul the Apostle by being converted by Christ and, and is placed into the body of Christ, something new, a new man. You remember back in the beginning of the Bible in Genesis 1 when God made something new in the earth and took out of the dust of the earth, the, took out of the red dirt there in, 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 uh, in Eden and formed a man. And breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and he became a living soul. His name was Adam. That was a new thing. 
Never been anybody before Adam. There had never been a man before Adam. Now, there were creatures. There were angels, all kind of different angelic hosts. But there'd never been, there, there were all kind of animals. There were whales and fish and birds and all kind of animals in the earth. But there'd never been a man. Adam was a new thing. Well, now God has created another new species of humanity called the church, the body of Christ. And if it's new, then it's new. It wasn't there before. See, that's the thing. In verse 15, of the twain to make himself one new man, he takes through the fall of Israel, includes them all in unbelief, all down here in the cutoff position, and now out of that, those lost, cutoff people, he takes believing sinners of any stripe, any hue, anyone that believes, and puts them into Christ and makes them a part of something that's brand new, that now has been revealed, that he might reconcile both unto God in one body by the cross, having slain the enmity thereby, and came and preached peace to you which were far off and to them that are nigh. For through him, through the Lord Jesus Christ and what he did at Calvary, based on the blood that he poured out around the cross of Calvary, through him we both have access to, under, un, under the Father, by one Spirit. Now, we'll get to that verse in a couple of broadcasts, and we'll have a good time with that one. That's a wonderful passage. I just want you to see what God's doing now. And there's a tremendous contrast here between what He did in time past with the circumcision, where the issue was His purpose and program with the nation Israel. And now that He set the nation Israel aside... The agency that God is using is now the church, the body of Christ. The agency has changed. The vehicle through whom he's operating has changed. It's no longer uh, uh, the, the, uh, the nation Israel. You know, people say, well, when you get saved today, you become a spiritual Jew. Well, you know, it wouldn't do you any good to become a spiritual Jew today because God has set that once favored nation aside and there's no advantage today in being a child of Abraham physically. Today you have to be a child of Abraham spiritually. Abraham's the father of all them that believe. How can that be? God justified Abraham when he was an uncircumcised man. Before he confirmed the covenant and gave him the sign of the covenant up here, he he justified him down here so that he could be the father of anybody that believed, though they be not a part of the physical nation, though they be not circumcised. But you see, when you're a seed of Abraham today, you're a seed of Abraham, the uncircumcised Abraham, not the circumcised Abraham. You're not made a part of the national covenant and promises that he gave Abraham. You're made a recipient of the spiritual identity God gives to those who believe his word. Somebody says, what about that passage in Romans 2 where it says, he, he is not a Jew that was one outwardly, but that is one inwardly. Yeah, but see, that verse didn't say he, a Gentile is a Jew if he's one inwardly. In the church of the body of Christ, Galatians chapter 2, verse 28 he says that in Christ there is neither Jew nor Gentile, bond or free, male or female, for you all one in Christ. Now you know good and well, you go to church and they don't have a unisex bathroom at church, at least not in most of them anyway. Uh, you, know what, you know what I'm talking about. They know there's men and women. And they know that there's a difference between male and female physically. So the issue in that passage, obviously, is, is not talking about physically. You can still physically be a Jew and physically be a Gentile, physically be a man, physically be a woman, and yet, in Christ, that physical distinction is no longer a recognized issue. Now the issue is the one new creature, the one new man. Your new identity in here, you're neither Jew nor Gentile, but you're the church, the body of Christ. You're the one new man. That's why he calls it a new man, a new kind of humanity. Where he takes the two and makes us one. We sing a song. I don't sing it because I'm not a singer, but we have folks that sing it, and I love it. It says, the ground is level at the foot of the cross. 
No man stands higher than I. I can call on Jesus' name, and a king can do the same. The ground is level at the foot of the cross. You don't read that message anywhere but right there in Paul's epistles. That's not the message in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And if you're back in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John trying to follow those passages and claim those promises and follow the commissions back there, you know something? You don't have a message for the world today. One of the most ridiculous things you ever see is somebody quoting Matthew 28 and Mark 16 and saying we need to take the gospel to every creature and to all the nations and trying to take that message back there to them as though that passage is talking about anything going on in, in, in the 20th century, the 21st century in America. Well, that passage hadn't got anything to do with anything you ever saw happen or you ever will see happen or you ever will participate in or you ever have participated in. You say, oh, Brother Rick, you don't believe in missions. You need to just be quiet now before you say something you don't, you, you, you get in way over your head. <laughs> yeah, we believe in missions. We send out missionaries. We support missions. And uh, we're part of mission, a missionary activity. We have, we have students from our school on the mission field. We have graduates from our school on the mission field. We have nas nationals in other lands and other nations uh, uh, that, uh, that, that are in our school and that have graduated from our school. We're involved in s seeing people get saved and seeing people get grounded in the Word of God and starting churches all over the world. But we don't do it on the, ba on, on the bogus basis of something that God isn't doing today. We do it on the basis of what God is doing. And maybe it doesn't make any difference to you. Maybe you're just willing to be religious and follow your religious traditions and your system and all that business and not care what God said. But that's not what we're that's not who we're trying to what we're trying to communicate on this program. We're not just trying to talk do preacher talk. We're not here to take up a collection. We're not here to try to get you to join anything. We're not here to talk about religion or denomination or philosophy or tradition. We're here to talk about what God's word says and what God's doing today. Ain't what he was doing back over there. It's different. The agency's different. This thing back over here, the way it was revealed. This thing over here is called prophecy. This thing over here is something that was preached and, rec and, and, and recorded in your Bible from Genesis all the way down to the book of Acts. This thing in here is called a mystery. And just because I don't write very well, don't, don't miss the point. <laughs> Look with me, if you will, at, at Romans chapter 16 and Acts chapter number 3. Now, you need to grow up. And if you don't, you don't like to grow up, or you don't like to be confronted with what God's Word says, well, then just wait another ten minutes and somebody else will be talking to you. But if, you, if you're interested in what God's Word says, there's something right here that can change your whole life, can make a difference in your life as an individual, can make a difference in your, in your marriage or your family, on your job, where you go to church, the way you live in every area of your world. Right here. Listen to me. Acts chapter 3, the Apostle Peter, back over here, talking to the nation Israel. He's talking about what he's been preaching to them. He says in Acts 3.21, about the Lord Jesus Christ, Acts 3.20, And he shall send Jesus Christ, which before is preached unto you, whom the heaven must receive, Christ has gone away, until the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. His second advent over here. Until the time of refreshing shall come from the presence of the uh, uh, Read the verse. Until the times of restitution, I'm sorry, of all things, which God has spoken by the mouth of all his holy prophets, since the world began. Now you see that? Prophecy is what God has spoken by the mouth of all His holy prophets since the world began. Started back here. It's what Peter's doing there. It's what's going to be fulfilled over there. Now you couldn't miss that unless you wanted to. Prophecy hadn't got anything to do with some preacher standing on the television and saying, Oh, I see God speak. No, it has to do with what God said in His Word about what God was going to do. And Peter, on the day of Pentecost and in early Acts, is preaching what God has spoken by the mouth of all His holy prophets since the world began. Now compare that with Romans chapter 16, verse number 25. Paul in here... Romans 16, 25, Now to him is of power to establish you according to my gospel, the message preached by Paul found in Romans to Philemon, and the preaching of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery, which was 
kept, notice, secret. How long? Since the world began. Now here's a message back over here that was preached since the world began. Here's a message in here that was kept secret since the world began. You figure it out. This isn't brain surgery, folks. You figure it out. Are they the same or are they different? God has drawn a line between those programs and they're flat different. This is prophecy. Spoken by the mouth of all the holy prophets since the world began. This is mystery. Kept secret since the world began, but now made manifest. You say, why is all that so important, Brother Rick? This program back over here is the law program. This program in here is a program of grace. Not only is the agency different, not only is the means of revelation different, but the operating system by which life is to be lived, grace and law, are diametrically opposed. Paul says, if it's by grace, then it's no more of works. Otherwise, grace is no more grace. You want to destroy what God's doing today in your life? You want to frustrate the grace of God? Then you think that your acceptance before God or your life for God or your performance for God or anything you have before God has anything to do with anything you do. In here, everything is based upon what Jesus Christ did. Everything's based upon Calvary and your faith in Him through an understanding of His Word rightly divided. Join us again next time, will you? Until then... Maranatha. Thank you, Brother Jordan, for that message from the Word of God. Friends, we have a cassette tape you'd like you to have to go along with today's study. It's yours free of charge. It's our way of saying thanks for listening. We'll be happy to see that you receive your free copy along with a free subscription to our monthly Bible study, The Grace Journal, if you simply write us here at The Message of Grace. The item should be on your screen. That's The Message of Grace, Box 97, Bloomingdale, Illinois, 60108. If you prefer, you can also call us during regular business hours at our toll-free number, 888-535-2300. The Message of Grace is a ministry of Grace School of the Bible, and we're glad you've been with us here today. If our study together has been a help to you, we'd be happy to put you in touch with a Bible study in this area where the message of God's wonderful grace is proclaimed from His rightly divided Word. And friend, if you are still not sure of salvation, that your sins are forgiven, and that you have eternal life as a present possession, let us know, and we'll be happy to send you some gospel literature that will show you the way. The address again is the Message of Grace, Box 97, Bloomingdale, Illinois, 60108. Thanks for being with us today, and God's best until we meet next time for another Message of Grace.